Today's video is sponsored in part by Collector Legion. Check out CollectorLegion.com for all your MTG needs and more. Hello everyone, welcome back to another round of Tuesday Night Legacy. Tonight we've got Dredge vs. 8Cast. Let's get into it. On the left we have AJ playing Dredge. Now this deck is known for the Dredge mechanic. Uh, printed way back, I believe, in Ravnica City of Guilds. The original Ravnica set off of uh, this guy right here, Golgari Grave Troll. Uh, one of the original Dredgers and the best Dredgers. This uh, mechanic Dredge replaces a, a draw. So instead of drawing, it's usually your draw step, but it can be any draw. You put that many cards into the grave and then you get to return that card with the dredge to your hand. So what this deck does is abuse the heck out of that mechanic in a number of ways. The Narc Amoebas have a number of uses, mostly to try and lower the amount of cards in your opponent's hand with the Cabal Therapies, or just being used as triggers for the Bridge from Below, which is uh, one of the ways that this deck wins. Not only that, but printed in the Warhammer set was the Poxwalkers. Now, this card is worded in such a way that whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, return Poxwalkers from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So if you are casting a Cabal Therapy, if you're casting a otherworldly gaze with flashback, any of these things is going to bring Poxwalkers right back to play, which is going to not only uh, add three more power to your board, this also has Death Touch. So, you know, um, being able to swap these guys out just adds more and more things, and then you're adding more and more zombies with the bridge from below until you have so many things that you can just swing in and kill them. Uh, sometimes not even with the Hogak Arisen Necropolis, which is also in the deck. On the right side of the battlefield, we have Daniel playing 8-cast, Blue's fairest version of an aggro deck. Now, this deck is all about playing these zero-cast artifacts like Lotus Petal, Mishra's Bobble, Mox Opal, Urza's Bobble, in order to get a ton of triggers off of the Psy Master Thopters, which puts a ton of Thopters into play. And uh, if you can have a super high artifact count, uh, we actually have a lot of affinity in this deck, too, in the Thought Monitor and the Thought Cast. Uh, the top end of this deck, of course, being the Kappa Cannoneer, which can come in as soon as turn two, I think. I don't know. There's probably a way to do a turn one, honestly. Uh, and then just make this guy huge and unblockable and just continue to swing until you win. And of course, it's got uh, Force of Will backup and uh, Emery to be able to recur those artifacts from your grave. This deck takes a lot of advantage of Chalice of the Void as well, trying to throw that down on turn one. Uh, Chalice on one is going to hinder a lot of decks in this format, and uh, this runs four of them, and it's just another artifact that adds to your artifact count, so very, very useful Chalice deck as well. Now that we know a little bit more about these decks, let's go ahead and get these games started. Players are shuffled up, let's get going. We have Daniel starting off here with uh, two baubles and a ancient tomb. I do not believe he knows what AJ is on at this time. Since Dredge kind of uh, acts on a different axis uh, than a magic deck usually does, he's not casting a ton of spells, uh, just doing a lot of abilities with the graveyard and activating abilities of creatures. We're seeing three mana from Daniel here. It's going to drop, I believe that's uh, Emery into play. Yes, I believe that it's Emery. And we're seeing AJ respond here with an otherworldly gaze. Putting some cards in the yard here. Basically, you get to um, survey all three and just dump them into your yard. Almost always, AJ is trying to make sure that he's just putting cards into the yard. He wants a dredger in the yard at any given time so that he can put more cards into the yard. So we saw a daze there for the Emery, and now we're doing a Cabal Therapy on something that's not in his hand. We're seeing two Thought Casts and the Force of Will, so Dan just kind of let lets that go through. It, it makes sense to allow that to go just because, you know, you don't want to give up two cards, especially if that card that he named is not in your hand. So we see Daniel. AJ kind of stuck on mana, I guess. 
I feel like he revealed a blue-red fetch there, but didn't fetch. But Daniel does not put down a land on his uh, his next draw step here, so uh, passes it back to AJ. We see another otherworldly gaze, and there's his first dredger, the Stinkweed Imp. So this is a dredge five. Uh, the higher the dredge number, the the better the card, basically. So you have four Stinkweed Imp and four Golgari Grave Troll, but only three Golgari Thug because Golgari Thug hits the the least with four. It is only an uncommon, I guess. So off of that dredge, we did see an Archimiba come into play here. I don't know if there's a bridge in the yard yet. I think maybe that card next to Stinkweed Imp is a uh, is a bridge from below. And if that's the case, we get to start making zombies here. So it looks like Daniel is countering this otherworldly gaze, which is is fine. There's a bridge from below, definitely. Um, unfortunately. Otherworldly Gaze does have flashback for two, so we're seeing a bridge and two more Narcomoeba for AJ here, so uh, AJ in a really good spot now, sacrificing one of those Narcomoeba, probably naming Thoughtcast, I would guess, since there were two in his hand. And this is a 2-2 zombie that has entered the battlefield, bridge from below, basically saying whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you get a 2-2 zombie. Uh, it does have that other text that players can take advantage of. If the creature on an opponent's side dies, then you have to exile all the bridge from below's in your yard. But as long as the dredge player can make sure that they don't have anything in play, like uh, AJ is doing now, it's a really good place to be. So we're seeing two Cabal Therapies in the yard here. And uh, AJ just passes turn, puts a land into play. Daniel finally gets a third land, so he can play anything for four mana, but I guess he doesn't have anything. We know he still has a force, maybe? There's a Mox Opal, but it's not going to do anything. There's only two artifacts in play. And so we see AJ fetch uh, this, not the Steam Vents, but the Scalding Tarn here. Just gets a basic island. Untapped, so he's got five power on board now. Two mana for an otherworldly gaze. Yeah, he does not have any dredgers in the yard. We do see Hogak, though, so the, I don't know if the dredgers are going to matter anymore. Oh, there was a thug in the yard. So that's four cards to the yard. I think that's a Golgari Grave Troll and a Poxwalker, so AJ is in a great spot now. I think he's doing a little bit of math. It's hard to get rid of cards out of your hand. Um, a secondary use of the uh, of the Cabal Therapy is to actually name yourself to get some of those dredgers out of your hand, since Cabal Therapy does same uh, target player reveals all those cards in your yard or in your hand, which is actually what he just did. Uh, Cabal Therapying himself, getting two Stinkweed Imps to his yard, creating two more zombies. And then uh, using Hogak, the Convoke Delve. You can only cast it. Oh, no, you can cast it from Gregor. You can't use mana for it, though. So Convoking those two zombies that he just got and delving the rest. Now he has 8-8 eight, eight Trample and the Poxwalkers to play. This is pretty much wrapped up. I think Daniel may be just looking at the top card of his library just to see what's up. Really thinking about this play here. One blue mana is going to get Emery. All right, a 1-2. Daniel already at 13 at this point. I am not sure what's going to save him here. Kind of need to blow the yard or blow the graveyard or both. AJ goes to untaps with um, 6, 14, 17 power on board. 8 of a trample. So unfortunately, I don't think there is any anything Daniel can do here. We're going to see a dredge from AJ. One, two, three, four. Oh, I must have missed the, uh, the fifth. And then uh, full swing outs here with trample. And I think that's actually another bridge from below too. So, all right, Daniel's going to scoop it up. We are off to game two here. See a seat of the Synod. It's always a great start from the eight cast player. 
being the artifact land that produces blue. Usually this is followed up by some number of zero cast artifact spells. Daniel holding his hand close to his chest, seeing a Misty go and get a polluted delta. Not a polluted delta, this is a uh, underground sea. This is typically a blue-black deck. Even though Hogak is green, I think it's the only green mana source. Oh, of course, Golgari Grave Troll. But you are never, ever, ever casting these cards. You're only using them for their dredge abilities. So that was a Cabal Therapy uh, to sell for the Grave Troll to the yard. And we are seeing a Chalice of the Void on one, which is going to matter. So that's going to stop that Spell Pierce that is in AJ's hand. Golgari Grave Troll, of course, getting to Delve 6, which actually put a ton of great stuff to the yard. We see a bridge from below already, a hard cast Narcomoeba, and a Narcomoeba coming back from the mill, and Hogak in play, or in, in the yard. So let's see here. Does he have enough? Hogak costs 5 extra, so 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, indeed, AJ does, but I guess he's attacking Daniel decides to force one of the Narcomoebas. Looks like AJ got slowed down just a little bit here off of that Chalice on one. Doesn't have any dredgers in the yard, and he doesn't have any way to put more cards in the yard. If AJ is desperate enough to, he could... Ooh, there's a Grief. Exiling a bridge. Uh, bridge is a useless card when it is in your hand. Interesting. So two of the Urza Saga targets, Shadow Spear and Pithing Needle in Daniel's hand. Taking the Kappa Cannoneer. Shadow Spear and the Pithing Needle. Not sure what Needle would name here. But did take that Kappa Cannoneer. Um... Definitely representing the biggest threat to AJ. Because if Cannoneer could resolve, then um, he'd have like a 5 to 6 to 8 ton beater. Now AJ waited a couple turns here. You want to make sure with that grief that Hogak would have resolved because he only had that much convoke or uh, that much delve to only get it in yet once. Even if it was countered, I mean, like, we could have waited. It's a little bit like an Uro, you know, like, as long as you have a ton of cards in your yard, then eventually you'll be able to cast it again. See an Ottawara playing Ottawara. And then do we have enough to cast the Thought Monitor? Is that the idea? One, two, three, four... I'm not sure what this 3-3 is. Oh, 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 it's the um, it's the construct. Off of, off of an Urza Saga, you get to make XX constructs, where X is the number of artifacts you have in play. I mean, Urza Saga is an auto-include in these 8-cast lists, just because these constructs can be absolutely massive. We do see AJ turning up the pressure here. And uh, swinging in for massive beats, the 3-3 three, three versus the 2-2-2s two, two, and uh, Narcomoeba and Hogak. So what, you're going to be taking 8, 10, 11 damage here if you block with that 3-3 three, three on one of the 2-2s. Two, I think AJ kind of pointed out that if his Construct dies, then he loses his bridge from below. But I'm not sure how important that is okay so we do sacrifice the construct to hogak to get rid of bridge from below drawing the card deciding all right what are we doing here one colorless floating finding a one of or a one or zero cast to put into play mox opal that is going to increase his mana count here Things are pretty dicey at this point, though, with Hogak in play. Uh, that Ottawara was a pretty good way to deal with that. One, two... Okay. 
casting Thought Monitor. AJ had the Force of Will ready for it, and that's a concede, and that is the game. So AJ had a pretty commanding lead in both of those games. Daniel tried to play on the normal axis that Magic usually is played on, whereas AJ was definitely using all of that advantage from his graveyard, which allowed him to take it 2-0. Thanks as always for stopping by and thanks for still watching. If you are still here, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date on all of our cool videos and all of our cool streams, which happen every first and third Tuesdays of the month. And if you are interested in either of the deck lists that were shown in this video, they are in the description of this video that is playing right now. Thanks as always to Spellhold Games and Collector Legion for allowing us to record in their play space. That'll do it for us this time. As always, I am Eugene and this is Tuesday Night Legacy. We'll see you next time.